of those massive magnets. The beam, though, is a tiny part buried inside that blue tunnel, right? It's inside the magnets, uh, very in, in the center of this magnet, and runs uh, around uh, 27 kilometers. What we see, the blue parts are dipole magnets. They're superconductive. They are, they are long, 15 meters long, and there are over 1,200 1, of them. And their main purpose is to bend the proton beam because it would otherwise go straight. We've seen a white, shorter magnet. It's also a superconductive magnets. It's called quadruples. There are around 400 of those. And they serve to focus the beam. So what's going on now is that the scientists want to improve the quality of the beam, right? Exactly. What's the role of the magnets that we're seeing inside the tunnel in doing so? Well, the magnets, as I said, the blue ones, they, they bend the beam of protons, they force it into a circular orbit, which they normally wouldn't take, and uh, the white magnets, they focus the beam. And uh, uh, then there are many other kinds of magnets. There are magnets just before the collision points that are there to squeeze the beam, to make it as intense as possible, to maximize the chances of collision inside the detector. So just before each of the four detectors, there are what we call straight sessions. We're back to the control center. Back to the control center. Where have we got to? Have we I think we've done another stretch. We'll hear very, very soon from Lynn Evans what's just happened. I think they snuck There it on. is. We met Mette Pat. So, what are they celebrating? I think they may have sent a, a better beam round again to point seven. Just double checking that they can control the beam, that they can improve the quality of the beam, and that they can repeat the journey so that it's under their control. en train de se faire dans le plan horizontal déjà et maintenant dans le plan vertical ces deux traces je, 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 je n'ai pas dit je pensais que c'était évident mais le haut c'est le plan horizontal et le bas c'est le plan vertical ok the beam is in point eight it's made almost a full turn they liberated the beam at point 7, and it's reached point 8 at the LHCB experiment. It's almost done, just two more sectors are missing, and that's where they were applauding. Unfortunately, we are a bit isolated here, and we could not follow, but we just got there. A very important milestone. We've gone from point 7 to point 8, and we're getting ever closer to completing the first revolution. I think the next... Um, transit, as it were, is going to be to the big atlas experiment. As you can see on the vertical representation of what's going on, but we've almost completed the entire chart. When we see that oscillating beam go to the very end and then lap itself around and join at the start point, that's when you know the first revolution is done. That's what you've got to be looking out for. Okay. Guys, can, can you just tell me what? We're waiting for the experiments to go carry on. Yeah, okay. Or you, you just tell me before you get the next cycle. This is going much uh, quicker than any of us had anticipated, certainly quicker than I had anticipated. Yeah, much again. quicker, absolutely. We were not ready even to comment. <laughs> Now, 
Now, I don't know if you noticed when we showed you the vertical representation um, that the oscillations have reduced. So the beam is perfecting. They are managing to make adjustments to improve the quality of the beam. And they are able to control the beam, to be masters of the beam, as it were. You've all heard about masters of the universe. Here at the LHC, we have the masters of the beam. And this is the first time that the proton beam is going to, as it were, christen the world's biggest experiment, the world's biggest bit of kit ever built, the Large Hadron Collider. And look at the laughter of relief the two in these two guys, they are Roger so Bailey delighted. and Lynn Evans. So they have everything in hand. They're very happy. I think they didn't expect themselves to be so fast. They are so delighted, aren't they? Well, the person in the, in the blue shirt we're seeing here with white hair is Chris Llewellyn-Smith. He's been Director General of CERN just before uh, Robert Remar, and he's a key person in making the LFC a reality, making the LFC stop. We progress at 20 km per hour. Okay, next, next cycle. Next cycle, we're going to go from 7 to 8, or from 8 to, eight to 1. Eight one. Surely not. Surely not. Oh yes, yes. He's a bold and brave man. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I think he is getting nervous now, Lynn Evans. Now that screen in the last but one sector, last, last but one octant. Keep a beady eye on the screen in okay, the top right now. hand corner. Now. Seconds. Five seconds. He hopes to get the beam to Atlas. 3.1, 8 to 1. Eight to one. <laughs> there it is. Aye. There it is. The beam has done the last but one stretch from point 8 to point 1. This is absolutely virgin territory, never attempted before. Works on the first go. Congratulations. I'm, I'm, I'm going to win my bet. I'm yeah. going to win my bet, he said. Well, I'm not privy to what his bet is. I have to say that when I spoke to Lynn Evans shortly before, Everybody's we went on a, 